All right, I'd like to open this uh, meeting tonight and uh, do we have any motion for the opening the meeting? Did you want a motion? Yeah, motion. Second. Okay, and uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everybody and uh, First thing on the agenda is approval of the advisory board of health minutes for the last meeting. So moved. Any second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and um, any opposed? Hearing none, the meeting minutes not passed. And so next on the agenda is the report from the subcommittee meeting. And so uh, at this point, I'm going to let our resident, um, um, Mr. White, uh, start the commentary and uh, give us a brief uh, comment about the meeting that we're talking about. So the mayor have formed a uh, a committee, uh, Dr. Morris, Dr. Ruckman, and I are serving on that on behalf of the Board of Health. Uh, prior to the first meeting, uh, we uh, met several times to try to develop some uh, a written uh, sort of memo, and we'll get it out to everybody. I apologize. I should have thought of that before we got into the, today's meeting. Um, but we, we will get that to you so you know what the Board of Health submitted. Uh, essentially, uh, the the conversation was directed at how do we provide improved services to uh, meet the mental health needs in our community that are pretty evident uh, uh, from the folks that have uh, abuse problems or core mental health illnesses. Uh, we provided a six, seven page sort of note going over some other communities and how they have uh, adjusted their response to uh, mental health needs. Uh, we discussed the fact that uh, some of those mental health needs uh, have to be dealt with along with issues around housing and, and food access to adequate food and, and employment. Uh, the memo also went into issues around the core health functions that this body's discussed and had a, a subcommittee work on in the past. And then it also looked at, at some funding options. So that was provided. got their initials on it. Is that so they don't get them mixed up? Hello? Hey, so uh, that was provided. Uh, the the committee uh, included the mayor. She appointed Councilman uh, Dan Hobart to chair. Also attending uh, was uh, Christina uh, Diana Edgars, the assistant director of the health department, uh, the city manager, the city finance director, uh, John Mayfield, who's uh, sort of a legislative liaison, not sure I got his title right, uh, and a couple of, couple of guests. Uh, the conversation uh, there was some good discussion around the core functions of the, of a health department. Uh, Dr. Morris had available uh, sort of a chart going over the essential functions. There was discussion around the issues of childhood vaccinations and immunizations and the, the staffing uh, shortage that the, this body identified with regard to being able to provide those services that had been provided before. Uh, then there was a bunch of time spent on the mental health issue. Uh, Dr. Morris has done quite a bit of research on uh, other communities and their models, focus on Denver, focus on Eugene, Oregon. And so we discussed those models. Uh, we were asked to do some further homework on models of response to mental health crisis. Uh, and, and through that, we've been working with the comp the folks at Comprehensive Mental Health. So, see what Ralph and Terry fill in that I missed. Sounds like a pretty good synopsis. I don't see anything. Um, Terry, any? No, unless anybody had any questions about the people we had contacted, so. Okay. Um, 
Hearing no other comment comments. Um, let's uh, go ahead and um, if, if there are no other comments regarding that particular um, I line item, let's go ahead and uh, take up uh, item number four, conversion therapy ordinance review and recommendation. Um, has everybody had a chance to read the ordinance being proposed? Okay. Yes. Um, is there any comment that um, anyone would like to make regarding this particular ordinance? Uh, this this is uh, Terry Morrison. The only thing that I saw uh, was uh, under uh, subsection A, conversion therapy, where it's talking about what it means, and then, uh, it goes on to talk about what it doesn't mean. Uh, and I assume legal has taken a look at that to make sure that uh, physicians who are uh, there, there are some children that are on hormonal therapies um, related to that issue. And uh, I just want to make sure that legal had looked at that to make sure that wasn't then somehow going to impede their ability to do their job. Uh, I, I can't read legalese very well. I know our law department has looked at it. I do know do not know if they have looked at that specific part. Um, so I uh, but I could go back and make sure that they have. That would be great. That's probably a good idea. Uh, it just says under uh, A1 conversion therapy and then you go on down and it says is neutral respect to sexual orientation or gender identity and obviously if you have uh, hormonal therapy going on to treat a child with uh, gender issues then it's not neutral as to their gender identity. Uh, so Dr. Morris can I ask you a question this isn't a topic I'm very familiar with I I've watched it just as it's gone through the community and read the newspaper article and chatted with a couple of folks but so my understanding is this ordinance would prohibit uh, a sort of a particular kind of 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 therapy towards uh, some children does and your question is making sure that this the ordinance doesn't act, accidentally branch into uh, more legitimate forms of, of practice where uh, kids are getting treatment that would be mainstream because my understanding is conversion therapy is not is not accepted by the AMA and, and other mainstream physician groups and and psychiatric groups as such but there are therapies that would be fitting mainstream and you just want to make sure the language doesn't accidentally fit into that did I get there yeah they normally normally wouldn't be labeled conversion therapy. Uh, and I don't know, I don't think any of the pediatrics groups in independence do hormonal therapies, but I don't know if children could be receiving them at the Children's Mercy uh, over off of I-70. Uh, and I just want to make sure this doesn't interfere with their ability. It's not conversion therapy as is touted, which is a uh, um, a counseling kind of thing to convince children that their gender Id identity uh, is incorrect and they need to fix that. Um, so that that was my only concern. OK, any other thoughts or comments that anybody would like to make? OK, hearing none. Um, do we have a motion to go ahead? Uh, Christina, were you going to say something? Yes, I was just going to make sure that, um, yes, the I believe the Human Relations Committee and the mayor are looking for a motion from the board to either support or not support the proposed ordinance. Oh, exactly. That's where I was headed. Great. So uh, do we have a motion? Well, I'm happy to move to support it in concept. I, I, I want to make sure Dr. Morris's question is is answered, and 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 I would assume that the the council 
would want to uh, make sure that T is crossed, I is dotted as well. So I don't know, can can I propose a motion that says we uh, support this ordinance predicated on uh, the expected answer of, and I'm sort of looking at Dr. Morris here, the expected answer that legal has assured there's no unintended consequences as, as he's framed. That was a pretty garbage motion, sorry. So Christina, what do you think? I, I don't see why the board can't make a motion uh, to support the proposed ordinance as long as, you know, it doesn't prevent normal hormonal therapies or treatments um, provided by a certified physician, you know, as is the norm. And um, I don't see a problem with putting that down as a motion. A motion contingent on certain factors. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, so do you have... Uh, everything that Jason said, or do you want him to repeat himself? She she worded it better. I think she worded it tighter to what Dr. Morris said. It's not, not sure you can reword that again. That, that would okay. <laughs> <laughs> I won't try that. Well, it is being recorded, so we could go back <laughs> if we have to. All right. Uh, do we have a second on that motion? A second. Any further commentary? If not, let's uh, go ahead and vote on the said motion. Um, can you call the roll? I can. Dr. Ruckman? Yes. Dr. Morris? Yes. Jason White? Hi, uh, yes. Dr. Ruddy? Yes. And I believe we have quite a few absences, but just in case they joined us while I wasn't looking, Lori Halsey? Dr. Nelson? Dr. Wingert? Dr. Buhlman? Motion passes by all that were present, though I do warn, of course, we do not have a quorum this evening. Okay. Next item on the agenda is board vacancies and applications. And um, um, I think that um, I would like to present the idea that uh, there are um, some, some things are changing in our community and especially with the new Board of Health. I personally think that I've uh, been thinking about it and I really feel like we need to look at some, um, maybe in a new uh, position or um, some uh, way of including mental health uh, personnel as uh, professionals uh, on the board. Some uh, Somehow that's a discussion I think that we would like to put before the city council and see if they would agree and and uh, how they would like to go about doing that making a change in that area and so um if there's some discussion i would like to present that particular topic for uh, your consideration if not um, we can make a, i'll make a motion and uh, go from there so ralph let me clarify you're suggesting that we need to we need the Delay. City Council to expand the uh, membership on the board to include mental health or just go out and, and, and try to find somebody that fits that job description? Um, there's a number of ways that could be done. It could be included in, um, you know, one of the existing positions of professionals or it can be taken as um, a, one of the um, I believe there are two uh, lay persons. One of those positions could be used potentially for that off for that particular um, professional um, uh, seat. So I don't know what all the. It's not something that I've thought through uh, with a lot of uh, uh, time. I just thought of it today, and so as a result, I uh, would like to put that before you guys to see if uh, there's. Uh, any like-minded uh, 
compatriots on the Board of Health? And if so, then uh, we could just uh, delay it for um, a month or so and let the city council give us their input and how they feel about that particular issue. I support that. That's a great idea. And I think the council's got options whether they want to fill available, but it just, I, you know, it, we've clearly got an issue in our community and there's clearly an energy to try to help uh, work to serve those needs and and making sure there's that diversity on the board. This seems like the time to have that conversation. And, and please, I I have I don't know who has applied. I don't know. I mean, I, to me, it's it's not weighing whose names are in the hat right now. It's it's the the broader question. So I'm happy to uh, render an opinion if asked, but I, I I'm, that's not where my head's at. I agree with Ralph and Dr. Ruddy. Got my support. I think it's a subject, uh, uh, an issue that's never going to go away. It's only going to become more significant as the years go by. And, um, you know, since it's such a long awaited um, issue to be taken care of, it's, um, I want to see that we, and they fall under our jurisdiction, jurisdiction so to speak, if uh, there's any kind of uh, board. They, uh, my understanding is they don't have a board um, for that particular uh, area of community need. And so if not, then we would probably be the board that would uh, cover their particular issues. And so um, that needs to be considered as well as far as if that's uh, going to be a, an issue related to our particular concerns. I agree, and particularly since we're looking at expanding mental health in the community and, and pulling in fire and police, so all with that, I think we need some expertise. And up until about a year ago, we had a mental health professional on the on the board and uh, her input was always welcome. So uh, I do have a question for Christina. I it, there's probably I, I probably already know the answer. Uh, when you go to the city website and it says uh, Independence Advisory Board of Health, it says that it was formed under Ordinance 1585, Ordinance 12423, and Ordinance 17448. And because I'm retired and have absolutely nothing to do with my life, I tried to find out those ordinances today, and none of those pop up on the city website or the city ordinance website, or uh, Google couldn't find them. And does anybody know where I they are? Yes, I can pull them for you. Essentially, what you would need is there. You have to go back through different city council meetings. Oh, and some of them are going to be so far back um, in those agendas that they may no longer be online. But our city clerk has them if you desperately want to see previous versions of them. Uh, let's just wait until there's something that we have to have a big discussion about because uh, I, I was I gonna say, I mean, at least one other thing on your plate at the moment. So, uh, one or two. But I mean, what it comes down to is the current ordinance it falls under it was passed with 17448. And so that gives that phrasing that it's a 10 member board, that there's four licensed medical practitioners, four lay people, a dentist, and a vet that are required to serve on it. Um, that my understanding when I was looking with Becky is that it has changed slightly in that it used to specifically say medical doctors. It used to specifically say very, very certain things. And so it has somewhat changed over the years, but not a great deal. Thank you. Christina, do you need anything from the discussion we just had to pass? back to Zach, to the council on sort of the question we've just discussed and see, I mean, they may tell us, no, nope, go ahead, render an opinion, but it just seems like Ralph's got a good suggestion. Do you need anything further from us for well, them well, to benefit from what we just are asking? Um, I can talk to Zach and I, I know the mayor has mentioned, um, you know, supporting a mental health professional, I'm sure 
I mean, we we hear that echoed back from the council many times, so I'm sure they would support that. If you guys want to do something formal, I can write up um, something to go on a council meeting, an official recommendation from you guys that would go that would alter this ordinance if you guys wanted. Um, I have no issue writing that. You would just have to tell me if you wanted to add a person. Does this become person number 11 or does this become one of the lay people becomes a mental health professional? Does one of the licensed medical practitioners need to be a psychiatrist? What are we looking at here? Or do you want to wait and have this conversation when you have a quorum? that that may be better and and frankly that level of detail i mean if the council wants to keep us at 10 because it's easier because it's and i i don't know i i just think I'm we need the benefit of that input yeah, and you won't find a psychiatrist I, I'm that's not a that, rare you know, rare not that in independence or practices in independence because there are none so well you are just a negative nancy tonight aren't you just <laughs> <laughs> um I will go ahead. How about this um, as a compromise? I will go ahead and draft something that will be ready for our October meeting, which it looks like we'll most likely have. Um, and I can then attach it to the minutes and or the next agenda item when it goes out and it'll be there for the board to review and discuss. And then if you guys want it added as an official change, we can go about it that way. OK. Yeah. And in the meantime, mention to somebody so they know, you know, we're sort of weighing in on it. And maybe one of them has a, some logic to add a new person or take. Uh, OK. All right. Any further discussion on that issue? OK, hearing none. Dr. Morris, our resident COVID expert, uh, time for the Covert corner. Hello? Yep. So, Christina, can you, can I share my stuff here? Okay. So, just a little Corona update. <clears throat> Nothing probably you don't already know. This is the city's new webpage in case you haven't been there. Uh, it's always nice to know that my zip code is number one for positive COVID okay. cases. Uh, the interesting part is that this little area over here, 64015, uh, is number two for COVID cases, uh, which was a little surprising to me. Uh, the next slide is just the daily new cases. This is for the entire Mark region, and the uh, number of cases is down some, but it's important that people understand when you tell them that we're still having 690 new COVID cases per day. Uh, luckily, uh, neither the mayor nor Christina nor I was one of them for showing up to the last uh, city council meeting. Uh, this is if you just carve out Eastern Jackson County, and uh, it also is down. But you notice there's a little uptick here in the last four or five days. And I think another interesting thing is you, if you look at what our average hospitalizations are for the uh, four hospitals in our area, uh, it's 20 and if you go back here to this peak in uh, December, the highest we ever had from our area was 22. So um, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, this is the United States data, which is not seeing a decrease in the number of people uh, with COVID or the people hospitalized or the people in ICUs that continues to go up and are neighbor to the south is once again almost out of beds completely. Um, this is the information that Daryl sh shared and I, uh, everybody on the board saw this, but the guests did not. Uh, Centerpoint continues to have a really busy COVID admissions service. They've got 35 to 50 cases at a time, depending on the day. Six to eight of them are in the ICU with four to six on a ventilator. Uh, they have 10 to 20 legacy cases, which are kind of recovering folks that aren't really well enough to get out. They're averaging one COVID death per day for the last month. 
not all of those live in Independence, so they don't show up on Independence's numbers, uh, but they do show in the metro area. Uh, and just speaking as somebody who's been in, uh, involved with ICU care, um, the people that work there don't like pronouncing folks dead. Uh, the fatigue that they're experiencing has to be just phenomenal. Uh, the outcomes are poor for the unvac unvaccinated with uh, other medical problems, like we know, vaccinated patients are doing better uh, and are a smaller percentage of their admissions. Citywide, generally, it's under 10%, uh, and the staff are all tired. Th these are the deaths which are uh, delayed by a few days because it may take a week to 10 days or longer to get deaths recorded. So for the metro area, uh, as of today, there were nine new deaths reported. Uh, that means that they did die somewhere in the last week. And if you look at, uh, oh, going back to that one, and if you notice that is a curve that's continuing to go up. And if you look at the Eastern Jackson County data, it also continues to climb. Uh, we're averaging uh, uh, two deaths per day for the Eastern Jackson County area. And if you look back to November 30th, they were averaging uh, three deaths per day. So we're just really from a death standpoint are creeping up to where we were, uh, even though we don't have as many cases or as many people in the hospital, uh, our death rate has actually increased significantly. Uh, this is the vaccination chart from this morning for the state. Uh, the 65 to 84 folks are still hovering about 15% unvaccinated. Uh, 85 is a little bit larger than that. The younger groups are catching up. They're doing a lot of vaccinations. And I think that the fact that the news is reporting younger and younger people. Last night, there was a story about a 24 year old uh, police officer from code from uh, I think he's from Olathe uh, that died from the disease. So uh, younger and younger people are deciding maybe it's time I need to do that. And so it's not over yet, but we're working on it. Pretty, pretty clever ending, uh, Doc. Like your picture. <laughs> OK, any uh, questions for Dr. Morris? I will just add in our epi was pulling numbers today for the council's COVID update. And um, she's seen that the average age of death and independence uh, from COVID is 53 years old right now. Um, and that in the last three weeks, we've had 17 deaths. So, I mean, we're not one a day, but we are, we are close to that. And for a community of, you know, as small as our community is, that's really frightening. Any other thoughts? OK, if there are none. Well, it looks like we've run out of things to talk about. If there are no um, objections, I would like to. Um, name our new um, our COVID corner, the COVID corner. I think it just has kind of a nice little sound ring to it and uh, Dr. Morris is our expert in the COVID uh, topic. He's done a great job since he's taken on uh, the responsibility. And uh, I don't think there's anybody better out there uh, right now with that particular responsibility. So uh, thanks for all your hard work and um, it's greatly appreciated. Okay, well, if there are no other thoughts or comments, this meeting is adjourned. Whack. Bye, guys. Same to you. Take care. Be safe.